actually. Okay. <laughs> okay, so our presentation is on the double null foliation of Minkowski spacetime, four dimensional Minkowski spacetime. So even though the name sounds complicated, which it was to us as well when we first got the topic, um, it's very simple. So double null foliation, null, as we all know, are the cones or are the, are the y equal x lines if I want to go into, um, if I want to go to the regular space, regular. Um, regular bases, um, but what foliation describes are the families of future directed and past directed cones. So first, I'll go into simple what we have been working in uh, in class, which is simple two dimensional space. Um, so first, I'll draw the regular, I guess, space time. Um, so all the future directed cones are of the form this. This is where the future directed cones start from. So if we consider a family of future directed cones that just continue along the time axis, then it's just simple. It'll be like this, um, more that way, be like this. And then all these families will be going up, going up, going up. So that's one null foliation, which is of future directed uh, cones. Then there's another foliation, that, which is why it's called double null foliation, of the, which is of the past directed cones. So you go down, and you consider the family of cones that go down, 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 down. And what we're interested in looking is the intersection between one of the members of the, um, of the future directed cones and one of the members of the past directed cones. So it's easy to visualize this in two-dimensional space, and it's going to be of the form if we, if we take any random cone on the time axis that is future directed, we take this one. And these cones could also be here, here, here. This one wasn't nicely drawn, but you guys get the idea. So if I take another cone which is past directed, which would be over here, then we can see their intersection would lie right here. This line would be their intersection over here. Oh, the the... It, well, yeah, for now it would be the line and then going forward. And the line, uh, oh, yeah, points, sorry. Line yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Back when we go into the three dimensional, then, then we'll get the. Okay. Now it's just the points. Now it's just the points. But, like the uh, professor alluded to, if we look into Minkowski three dimensional space time, um, we would get cones of the form, if we draw just the 3D axis. Um, we would get cones that are sort of like this. I'll actually not draw this one because that will make things complicated for now. If I draw a cone right here, and then another cone, which would be past directed right here, then the intersection that we get is actually going to be a circle right here. And that's better to visualize um, I, we printed a cone out, actually, um, and if you guys look at it, so if you consider, um, if you just consider this cone with its, with its vertex right here, this is a past directed cone, if you guys can see it's really small. It's a past directed cone with its vertex right here, and this would be a future directed cone, it's pretty small, It'd be a future directed cone, and if we place it, consider these two are overlapping each other, if we place it right here, then this would map out a circle. On uh, which is which is their intersection, a circle right here. And if this goes further down, then you would get a circle over here um, of a bigger radius. And Puya over here is going to explain um, what the what the radius and the properties of the circle would be. Yeah. Okay. So, but just uh, one one second. Only. Just to say, the double non-foliation is the collection of the two 
families of corns, right? The yeah, one yeah. Um, yeah, that's why it's called double nut. Foliation means you foliate something, you cover something with other things. So you cover your space time with null corns. One way to cover it is with outgoing null corns, yeah, so future direct null corns, with, with points on the T axis. Time axis. Time axis. For every point on that axis, you take the outgoing cone, the, null, the future direct cone. That gives you one way to cover every point of your space time. And that's called the future direct null foliation. You can do the same thing for the past direct cones. That gives you the past direct null foliation. And if you take both of these families together, that gives you the double null foliation of the cones. This is one way to cover your space time. Null cones. And this kind of representation of the space time is fundamental in the relativity. We don't work with T, X, Y, Z. We work with double nucleations. It's a uh, okay, now and now we want to understand how the one cone of the one family intersects the other one and other cone of the other one. Yeah, so so if we take one pair of those past directed and future directed cones and then intersect them and look at their intersection in the circle, I'm not going to go further because it's just gonna be ugly, just focusing on this. So this point over here, this is a D vector, which, uh, which is the, it's the, the null vector, and has the magnitude one with our normalization. And that's basically the, the length of our x vector being the space time. Let's say this is, for example, x vector being x one of x two in the two dimensional space. Then over, uh, a time vector, if you will, which in this case, uh, so for, for if this is our origin, this is tau, this is the time like uh, axis, this is time tau passed into the future, and this is time tau hat. And from the tau hat, we have the past directed, and from the tau, we have the future directed. Now, what is happening, if you, if you look at uh, this relationship, then this displacement here is basically our the magnitude of our x. That makes sense. By the definition of the cone. Sorry? Yeah, by the definition, by the definition of the cone. Yeah. So, and that's, that's just R. And this point over here on the time axis would be the difference between these, these two divided by two. So basically, uh, tau hat minus tau divided by two, uh, which is one. Then from there you get this radius of your R to be the difference between your centers of the two cone divided by two. So the further you take these two centers to be, the further you go from each other. You got bigger cones and bigger circles, but that's just for R1 plus two. It like the real life to be R1 plus three will not be equal to that. Well, it's going to be a little bit. I'll use the same diagram right here. This is for R1 plus 2 because that's easy to make uh, on, a, on a board. But if you consider R1 plus 3, which is what our real life uh, space time is like, instead of a circle, you now have another additional dimension added, which, just, which is a sphere, which is the, which is the intersection of the two cones uh, in our, in our four-dimensional uh, Minkowski space time. So the intersection would be a sphere and that sphere would have the same properties as this circle over here with the same radii um, and other different properties as well. It's just going to be a sphere embedded in, in, within it. Um, so if you guys have probably heard the phrase, the circle of life, it should actually be the sphere of life. <laughs> That's magic. <laughs> but uh, that is double-nulled foliation of the dimension of the